everyone, this is Sam, and welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you my Poison Confessor build, which is a continuation of my previous uh, Beginner's Confessor Guide. And this one is one of my top builds in the game because, as you can see, it has incredible elite movement with plenty of invincibility frames, but at the same time, all of its melee hits actually adds up to build up poison, so you're really optimizing everything you do. You're gonna dodge efficiently, you're gonna hit fast, and when you hit, not only do you hit hard, you're gonna poison the enemy, and combined with it all, you're also gonna add in a shield play element that gives you plenty of hard counters. At the end of the day, you can't be hit, and when you hit, you poison, and when they're poisoned, you can just leave them be, and they will die on their own. And yes, this also includes plenty of bosses, which really helps you change the pace of the fight, and it keeps you safe. So, I guarantee by the end of this tutorial, this Poison Confessor build is going to help you win and it's going to be plenty of fun. So if you enjoy our content or this video, please consider subscribing and adding a like. And if you would like to see more content from us, you can just click on the link in the description below or the card above and you'll see all the RPG content we've been doing all year long on the channel. Now from a gameplay perspective, this build works so well because you're utilizing three things. Disappearing frames, shield counters, and efficient poisoning. You can see all of that play out right here. I can dodge efficiently, get to the spot, hit hard, poison, hit some more, and stay safe. But all of this obviously is only possible with the right type of equipment. So let's begin by figuring out which exact piece of equipment you need and specifically how you can use them most efficiently. And also at the end of the video, I'll leave a section where I'll show you how to find every single piece of equipment I mentioned so you can check out the timestamp at the bottom. Now this equipment loadout is meant for the Confessor class with high faith, uh, decent endurance, decent mind, and either high dexterity or high strength. You can pick one or the other, but I went with dexterity for mine. And in terms of the melee setup, you can use a straight sword. Here, I'm using a broadsword. But most importantly, you want to give it a skill bloodhound step. And you also want to make the affinity match your attribute. So here for me is keen because I have a dexterity build. Now the skill Bloodhound step is absolutely essential to this build because it comes with a disappear element and you're going to utilize this to perfection. So as you trigger the skill or tap L2, you're going to disappear and dodge forwards. And also, as you finish this dodging animation, make sure you tap light attack. What this is going to do is you're going to finish that disappearance dodge with the quickest attack possible with a straight sword with the confessor. And this Bloodhound step can also be chained easily, so that's what makes it so deadly. Here you can see in this sequence, I just keep triggering the skill back to back, and it's fast, and that's very good movement. And another big thing about the Bloodhound step is that it can also be chained with dodges. So here you can see me dodge into a Bloodhound and into some quick attacks, but the key is I can chain between Bloodhound to Bloodhound or Bloodhound to dodge back to Bloodhound in the quick attacks. So you want to take full advantage of this, especially the disappearing frames, combined with the quick attack. So here you can see me phase off uh, Godric and I'm using the disappearing frames to essentially dodge and avoid his attack, go into the quick attack and then follow up by as many other light attacks as possible. So there, disappearing frames, dodges the attack and I can do them back to back quickly. So I dodge another attack, get around the enemy, get into good position, disappear again because it's just so easy to trigger it. I can never really be hit as long as I figure out my enemies uh, pacing. And the Bloodhound step is also great for retreating, so once I get into melees and I want to get out, I just back tap, trigger the skill, and look at how much distance that creates. And another thing, because it creates such a big distance, you can actually use the Bloodhound step and the dodge chain sequences to close the gap. So in this sequence, you can see me do just that, close that gap area, and just get ready to hit. And even though I'm deep in the fight, if he tries to hit me again, I'm going to avoid the damage with the disappearing frames, and that's what I did right here. Needless to say, the Bloodhound step is kind of OP and it is infinitely better than the Quick Step. Once you get familiar with it and you figure out your spacing, you can just use it to just get to spot where the enemy can't really do anything and then you can get in a whole bunch of hits and finish them off as quickly as possible. Now, to take this further though, we're also going to add in a shield. So with the shield, you also want to give it the skill, no skill. If you equip that, you will be able to have the shield, have the sword, and still be able to trigger the Bloodhound step because of the no skill on the shield. So with the shield in hand, essentially you can do a block counter and a Bloodhound step quick attack, and it has great synergy. So you can hold the block button to block, and if you're able to block it with stamina left, you can counter with a heavy attack, and after that, you can really just add in a Bloodhound and a quick attack if you want to follow up the counter you did with the shield. Since you can't block and counter back to back, but a block counter into a Bloodhound quick attack, that's perfect stamina management and execution. 
And lastly, you're going to make everything work even better by adding in pre-fight buffs and using poison to optimize melee hits. Now, one of the favorite pre-fight buffs is obviously the Wondrous Mix. Here, I was able to get plus 10 dexterity and plus 15 stamina. This is because within my mix, I had these uh, crystal tears. This dexterity one is what gave me my plus 10 dexterity. And also, I have this uh, green spill crystal tier. This is the one that also gives me plus 15 stamina. So that's perfect. And also, I'm going to stack that Wondrous Mix with uh, this spell right here, which is the uh, Poison Armament, which gives me my poison build up. So every melee hit builds up poison. And I'm going to stack that with one more spell, which is the Poison Mist. And this spell is the one that I always cast before a boss fight. So as the boss approaches me, I'm going to cast it right in front of me. So he walks into this melee cloud. And I'm going to stay here to bait him to fight me within this cloud to get him poison. I'm going to hit him to make sure it happens faster. And with that sequence, I was able to fully poison this guy in five seconds. And this poison effect is significant because it lasts 100 seconds and it does 10 damage per second against this guy. So that's a lot of damage over time. And depending on when you kind of set this up, you can usually poison a boss twice in one fight. So the poison damage over time really changes the pace of the fight. Here you can see I've had this guy pretty much down to nothing. So I'm just going to keep dodging as I know the poison is going to kill him. Because I know it does like a thousand damage over time. And I just triggered it maybe like 30 seconds ago. So I know with that amount of health, he can't last. So I can just stay safe and watch him die. Which is a very, very helpful tool, honestly. So now let's take a look at the attribute points distribution with this build and why you want to make certain decisions. So when it comes to leveling up your Confessor to this poison build, the big choice you have is between Dexterity and Strength. And I chose Dexterity because it allows for faster casting. Because I'm chasing for kind of this poison setup, I prefer him to cast fast because I know I have to cast one more time during a boss fight to poison them twice in a fight. That's why I have high dexterity. And obviously the high dex is also going to help me cast other spells faster, which I will go to as I use other offensive spells. But the rest of the way, uh, Faith, Vigor, Mind, Endurance, I like to keep a very good balance because I kind of use everything, but not a lot of each. So as long as they're at decent levels, everything will synergize very nicely. And down the line, I will also respect this build to show you what it's like with heavy strength. Because with strength, you can use better shield. So if that's your lean with the Confessor, you can do that too. But overall, with my build, the Confessor Poison with high dexterity, this is how it plays out. Plenty of Bloodhound stuff, efficient poisoning. And because the affinity of the weapon is changed to dexterity, so it scales very well. So I hit hard, I poison fast, and I cannot be hit. That's the whole approach of this build. And I added shield counters just for good measure. Now let's go to the uh, how to find section and pick the exact locations and routes of all the equipment. So with the first one, Bloodhound Step obviously is the most important. With this one, you can actually get as early as level one. So you start off at the first step. That's the section where you first spawn out of. And then you're going to travel northeast to the first church of Marika. And once you get to the church, you want to exit the church this way and then turn right. And then keep turning until you reach this little pond lake. This is more like a pond area. Go straight down and there's a teleporter hidden right there. Take that teleporter and it's going to send you all the way across the map to uh, this section, which is quite far from where you are. You're going to spawn right there. And once you get to that point, you want to travel down kind of southeast and get to this grace, the Lens Rise. And once you get to the Lens Rise, you want to head towards this little bridge area towards the north at night make sure you're doing this at night and you're going to see this night cavalryman and you can't beat him so but you can do this you can hit him once and then lead him up the hill make sure he's relatively close to you he is he will one shot you depending on what level you are but you're not even gonna touch him you'll kill him so you go up you take the exact path i'm taking here so you kind of take him to the side, get him poisoned on those little poison ground traps if you want. But that's not what's going to kill him, that's what you're going to do. You're going to keep him close enough so he's still behind you. And then you're going to make this turn. He's right there. Jump over this log. He's going to try to follow you and he will die. He's going to fall off the side by jumping over the same log you just jumped over. And that's what's going to get him. Once you get him, you're going to get Bloodhound step. And as you can see, there's no hitting involved. So you can do this at level 1 as long as you have a horse. And the next thing you want to add is the poison armament. Now with this one, assuming, you know, start from the same spot, you can also get this at level one if you want. You're going to go east to the uh, Dragonbird ruins. And once you get to the ruins, 
you're gonna find the cellar. So here's the ruins, Dragonborn ruins, and the cellar is right there. You wanna go down. There are a few rats in here, and you can even take them out of your level one. But once you get there, there is a chest. The chest is gonna teleport you all the way across the map to this crystal tunnel area. And once you come out of that teleportation, make sure you leave that little cabin. Turn left, don't go anywhere else. And just go straight down. And you kind of want to walk in a dodgy kind of movement, just in case you don't get hit. There's a graze right there, trigger that graze. You want to exit the tunnels to the left. And once you've exited the tunnels, just travel down south to that area right there. And what you're going to see is this invisible beetle pushing the round ball thingy, but you can't see him, he's invisible. But you can see his steps, and you're going to have to time it, and you're going to swing your sword and kill him. So he's invisible, but you can time it because he works at a set path. Once you kill him off, you'll be able to get the poison armament just as I did there. So that's how you pick that up. Now the next thing you're going to need is the poison mist. This one you can also get super early if you want. Same thing, assuming you're starting from where you spawn, the first step. You're going to go uh, southeast to the Castle Morn Rampart. Make sure you trigger this graze. And once you get to this graze, you just want to go a little bit down south-ish into this forest area, which I have targeted for you. Once you get to there, you'll find this beetle. He kind of teleports as you try to hit him. Just, you know, locate him and chop him down. You'll be able to kill him. He doesn't fight back. And if you were able to kill him off, which I did right there, force back is easier. You'll be able to pick up the poison miss. And that's how you get both of them. That's your poison setup. Now, in regards to your Wondrous Mix, you obviously need the Crystal Tear. This one is the one for the Stamina. So, starting off with the first step again, you want to go northeast, get back to the first Church of Marika. This is where you're going to find the bottle for the Wondrous Mix, so you need the bottle first. But once you grab the bottle, travel down south, and you can go to the area right here that I've marked, right next to the tree. And when you get to there, you'll find this uh, right there. That is going to be where the tier is. You're actually going to pick up two things there. But what you're really going for in this instance is the uh, green spill crystal tiers. And this one gives you 15 stamina. So that's very nice. Now the next tier you're going to go is the dexterity knot. This one is the one that gives you the plus 10. And because we have a dexterity built, that's going to help a ton, a lot with casting and also movement. This one is where you have to go northwest. All the way up past like four of these graces. And eventually you will get to the scenic isle grace and from there you go a little bit more northwest and you're gonna find like a little cliff and hill area go up the hill and you'll be able to find dexterity crystal clear and you pick that up that's a good plus 10 so that's very very solid and lastly uh, for you to get the no skill to equip your shield so you can use the bloodhounds there while you have your sword is this well master shack which is just up north from where you start off the game and in there, you'll be able to find this guy and he will sell it to you. So you buy the no skill from him, equip it onto your shield, and you'll be able to bloodhound stab with your sword 24 seven, all right? So that's very important. So there you go. Uh, as always, if you guys are coming by, make sure you subscribe or like if you enjoy our content. And uh, if you got any questions, leave in the comment section. And we look forward to speak to you guys again very soon.